Uh, we went up four, and um, uh, they stayed with it. Uh, we, we couldn't get a, uh, the necessary stops down the stretch. Uh, they basically just uh, went at what they felt was a mismatch and attacked the mismatch and, and got layups. So we, we have to do a better job uh, in those situations uh, in trying to um, control the basketball and not allow them to get a look, you know, uh, at the rim. Uh, if they take and make a three, that's one thing, but uh, getting two layups and one of the layups being an and one was tough to overcome uh, down, down the stretch. Uh, but give those guys credit. They, they hung in there and they were physical and, and they came in and got a win. The, Mike, the way the, that one ends, uh, the, kind of the crazy frenetic pace down the stretch there, what do you feel like you guys learn from, from a game like this? Uh, it, it's, it's a great question. Um, I, it, the most important thing is, is taking pride in sitting down and guarding the ball, you know, and um, knowing how, uh, you know, like, it was a great learning experience, especially for Keegan, uh, being a rookie. Um, he's guarding Trey Young, one of the best players in the league. And you, when you're up four, uh, you got to do what you can to not give up an and one. You know, um, if he scores over the top of you, great. But don't lead with your hands because he's more than capable of getting an and one. And if you're going to lead with your hands, you better knock the crap out of him so he doesn't get an and one. So I, I, I think. Uh, Great learning experience for him, and probably the rest of our team too, because most of us probably hadn't been in that situation. Uh, so just trying to uh, close a game when a team uh, plays the uh, "I'm going to pick on you" switch ISO uh, situation. Hey, Mike. Uh, 25 or 25 at the free throw line, then you missed the last two by some bonus. Do you think that was the difference in that turning point, or do you think it's the and one by Young? No, you know, things like that are going to happen, you know, uh, like Foxy's turnover. That, things like that are going to happen. Uh, you just you can't give up two stone-cold layups and one of them being and one in the final, what, three possessions or something like that. You, you just got to do a better job guarding the basketball uh, collectively uh, in a situation like that because – yeah, I say this all the time. You know, I, I get a lot of people that say, hey, you guys are doing great playing fast, and the offense is this, and the offense is that. At the end of the day, the offense is fun to watch and all that, and you're going to probably win some regular season games, but we have to be able to sit down and guard uh, if we expect to be uh, a really good team and make some noise come playoff time. If, if we can't sit down and guard the ball, uh, it could be tough for us. Yeah, Mike, the uh, the challenge that you had, what did the official tell you on that? Because there might cut out midway through, but it looked like an unnatural play by Trey Young that should have been an offensive foul, and instead the Hawks got the ball out of bounds. Uh, when they called it on Kevin, yes. uh, they I didn't get an explanation. Yeah, they just they just said it wasn't. Uh, they said it was not a foul on Kevin, and so I I didn't know I didn't know what he did. You know, I I told him initially. I said. I said he, he, he backed up into him, but they just said it wasn't a foul by Kevin, nothing else. Mike, how beneficial are, are these games um, just as a, like a teaching tool or whatever? You played a bunch of close games and, and you know, won your share and, and lost a few. What, what, do you, what do you gain from these experiences and how could that pay off down, down the road? Well, it, you know, the one thing that you do like is we were down most of the game and our guys found a way to make a run, uh, and, and not only make a run, but to take a two-possession lead with about a minute to go or a little less than a minute to go. So um, knowing that we're never going to be counted out, in my opinion, is, 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 was good to see tonight, just the res resiliency of the group, because you're going to need that from time to time throughout the course of the year. Um, but like I said, trying to figure out uh, how to sit down and, and guard is something that uh, we have to do a better job of uh, collectively. Coach Brown, uh, 
course, you guys were in a thriller last night. But what do you tell your guys, you know, um, you know, before the game coming in here, these teams that are on uh, these losing streaks and they're dying to, you know, to get a win. What do you do to try to get them settled into the fact that you got to play these games from the start, tip off into the end? Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, we tell them the same thing we told the team against the Utah Jazz. I think Utah was on, were they on a losing streak? They, they, I think they were on a four-game losing streak, Utah, Utah. So we tell them the same thing. We told them going into the Jazz, and we beat them. I mean, they, they're going to be teams that are on losing streaks. That doesn't mean that we should automatically beat them, you, you know. Uh, we told them that these guys are going to be hungry. We told them that Utah was going to be hungry because when you lose three or four in a row, you're desperate for a win, and so you try to – play a little harder, you try to lock in a little bit more in order to get that win. And so for us, being or at least for me, being in the league 31 years, it doesn't matter if a team's on a four-game losing streak or a team's on a six-game winning streak, you got to come play because every single game is a separate entity. And if you don't do the little things the right way uh, from the start to the end, it's going to hard to be it's going to be hard to get a victory. Now, obviously, the one thing that you like to do is protect your home court, you know. And um, when you lose a game, no matter again who it is on your home court, it hurts, you know. But I don't I don't really take into account, you know, this team's on a losing streak, so we should win. Because I'm not going to say, well, this team's on a winning streak, so we should lose. You, you know what I'm saying? To me, it's it's all a separate entity. Each game is a separate entity. Yeah, Coach, when it comes to the backup five, you went with Rich in that first half, and then second half went with uh, Trey Lyles. Yeah. What did you see with uh, with both of those groups? Well, we just we just haven't you know we we haven't been able to to find ways to score. You know, and Rich has been doing some of the little things that we're asking him to do, but just collectively as a group, we haven't been able to put the ball in the basket and we hadn't rebounded and we hadn't gotten any stops. It's not a good combination. And so uh, we wanted to just change it up to see if, uh, you know, having Trey at the, at the five as a stretch five uh, could disrupt Atlanta's defense a little bit with his ability to pick and pop. And now they – have a hard closeout, or maybe Trey knocks down a three, and you know we get moving a little bit in that regard. And and uh, you know we we were able to get some stops. We were able to put some points on the board, and we cut the lead a little bit. And uh, because of the different look that we gave them, um, and and so that, that, that's all it was, just trying to generate something offensively. Because you know not just tonight, but even last night, you know we couldn't generate uh, much with that second group. Thank you, guys.